Thank you so much for staying tuned in. If you've been watching part one, you are a real one. Plus you're about to design a really fly duster. If you're new here, you already know exactly what to do. Love the backdrop? Well, I purchased all of my equipment from Amazon. The links are below. And as an affiliate, I do get a commission, but let's not waste any more time and get right back into sewing this duster, shall we? So at this point, you should have cut out all of your lining fabric after you finish sewing all of your out of show patchwork pieces, just like I am here with the cuff. Again, for the sake of this video not dragging on, I did not record myself sewing every single piece, so I just went ahead and sewed up all of my outer shell pieces, including the bodice, bottom, sleeves, and cuffs together. Fun fact, I sewed this standing up just for you. That's how much I love y'all because it wasn't easy. Anyways, let's check out how I sewed all the lining pieces together. When sewing pieces together, we usually start with our bodice's shoulder seams. Here I already pinned and now I'm sewing the lining shoulder seams together with a half of an inch seams to account for ease for movement. Clearly my machine is excited for the camera in this part because I don't know why her thread is jumping like this. Next you're gonna sew the center back seams together with a one inch pleat about two inches down to account for ease on the top and bottom of the jacket like I did here. If we didn't do this, our jacket wouldn't fit properly or move properly and it would just be uncomfortable and tight. All right, now that our center back is nice and pleated, and if you give it a little tug, you'll see how much room your garment has to be functional and fly, not stiff and tight. Next, we are gonna pin and sew up our bodice's side front seams together to give our lining that nice fitted feel inside. Here's our front facing piece, which allows our jacket to fall properly. Make sure you also cut out your interfacing with your pattern and notch for this step. I mistakenly thought I can get away with it since denim is a heavier fabric, but I was wrong and had to go back and add it. So learn from my mistakes and don't repeat them. Next for our back facing piece, you want to repeat the same steps because we will be sewing this piece to our front facing piece. Can we just have a moment for how beautiful this lining fabric is? Oh my goodness. First you're going to pin the seam you sewed for your bishop sleeve to your bodice's side seam and make sure to match the edges of the fabric nicely. If you notice you need to make adjustments along the way as you pin, feel free to go back and do so in order to ensure your sleeves and shoulders fit properly. Once you pin one side of the bishop sleeve all the way from your bodice's side seams, better yet called the arm side, to your shoulder, you are gonna repeat on the other side as well. But make sure you leave the sleeve cap portion unpinned for our dramatic pleats. Now for the pleats. We are gonna simply fold and pleat during this part. This part also feels like magic because you are essentially turning the sleeves excess into perfect little pleats that will actually fit our sleeve cap. For my sleeve cap, I pin and folded down four one inch pleats evenly with two on each side of our shoulder seam. P.S. Once you get the hang of pleating and gathering, it becomes easier, so don't worry if this is a little challenging. Again, persevere. I also measured then flipped my lining right sides out to examine if my pleats were evenly distributed. You will also repeat all of these steps for your outer show pieces as well. Once you are satisfied with your pleats, go ahead and sew your bishop sleeves on with half an inch seams. Now we're gonna pleat the edge of our sleeves in order to fit our cuff and finish off that super duper fly bishop sleeve style. I pleated four one inch pleats evenly around the edge of the sleeve as shown here. And after you do so, you will pin your cuffs lining to the sleeve and sew with the half of the inch seams. As you sew, make sure you turn and pivot your fabric under the bottom of your sewing machine to make your life easier.
and voila our pleats look phenomenal so let's move on i added this clip because i actually made a mistake which is inevitable sometimes when you've been sewing for hours all day but here i sewed the facing on the wrong way here's the correct way you will again add your interfacing to your back and front facing pieces which i initially underestimated pin and sew both pieces together then sew your facing to the rest of your jacket's lining, but make sure you notch your back facing piece to loosen up that curve as you sew it on the under collar. Then sew the curved edge of your front facing piece to your jacket's lining with right sides together, not vice versa like I initially did. I then trimmed off the excess and realized this mistake began when I drafted the front facing pattern piece without referring back to my initial pattern. But no worries, I got it together and experience is the best teacher. Finally, our facing is on the correct way and now we only have one more step left until we complete our jacket's lining. For our lining's last step, we are going to pin and sew the continuation of our front facing piece to the bottom of the jacket. As you sew, make sure to match up the seams connecting the bodice and the bottom of the jacket to your facing seams like I just did here. Now our duster's lining is all set and ready to go. I'm so amped, let's get it. So I went ahead and sewed the outer shell together. Of course you're gonna repeat all the steps to sew your denim patchwork outer shell, except for the facing pieces and the pleated center back portions. But in the meantime, let's have a moment for all these angles. Next, we're gonna place our lining and outer show fabrics right sides together, pin and match all the way around the edges of our fabrics like I did here, which will be our new seams, and sew with 5 8 inch seams. However, make sure you don't sew the cuffs together and also leave the hem of the bottom of our jacket open so we can flip our jacket inside out later to finish it off. For the cuff finishing, I tried two different methods and unfortunately forgot to record the first. So for the sake of this clip aligning with the directions, here is the second method. Gently pull both of your lining and outer shell sleeves and cuffs inside out and lay them in between each other, not just inside the lining portion or this won't work properly. Then pin the cuffs edges all the way around, right sides together like I did here. Also make sure you match up your cuff seams and make sure your cuff and sleeves don't twist as you do so. You will then sew or serge the raw edges with half of the inch seams. Here I just double checked the seams, but I must say, what a beautiful union. Now it's time for another magical and rewarding part. Gently put your arm in your sleeve and pull your lining and outer shell sleeves plus cuffs right sides out. As you can see, our new seam where the raw edges were are nice and concealed. Next, you're gonna iron and press the cuffs so they lay nice and flat. I also folded in my cuffs so there is a little sneak peek of denim patchwork on the inside, but this is totally optional, of course. I just like the little details and finishing touches. And here is our finished cuff and sleeve. This stitch reinforces our facing by keeping it in place. You're gonna sew with narrow 1 8 of an inch seams all the way around the lining next to where the outer shell and lining fabric meet. As you sew, make sure you pay attention and go very slow. Since I was so anxious to finish, I didn't capture the hardest part. So here is a step-by-step -step reenactment of how I finished the jacket corners featuring my muslin. I labeled all my pieces B for bodice, F for facing, L for lining. I know this part sounds scary, but you wanna trim a rectangular or square piece from the bodice. I also notched my pieces. Next, pin and sew your bodice and facing pieces right sides together with one half an inch seams. Press then understitch on the facing piece with one fourth of an inch seams so it lays properly. 
Then sew your lining piece to your facing piece. But before you sew, notch an inch away from the bottom of the lining piece. This is where you start sewing with one half of the inch seams. No, I also made adjustments to my mock pieces since I cut them a little bit too small, but don't worry about this on your actual jacket. Next, place the facing piece on your bodice. As you do so, make sure to press and fold the seam in the direction of the facing. This will be your jacket's corner. And sew with a half of an inch seam with this seam open to the left towards the facing. Next, you pull and pin the bottom of the lining and bodice together and sew with a half of an inch seams. Now we're gonna push our corner right side out and feel free to use something like a marker or sewing notion to push the corners in. Then check and press your corners nicely. Lastly, you're going to blind stitch this tiny opening close. Once you finish both corners, make sure you flip your jacket right sides together. Press any areas that need to lay flat, such as the collar, cuffs, facing, and hem. Hand sew up the two inch opening located on the hem of the bottom of your jacket. And you did that, okay? And of course, thank you so much for watching.